automobile. And you may find yourself in a beautiful house with a beautiful wife. And you may ask yourself, dive into all the videos of the filming locations throughout Vermont I did want to just touch base real quick on this location here in New York I did not visit this location but this is the site that they filmed the farmers leaving the city so they were leaving the residents on their way to move out to Redbud Not quite the same, but you get the idea. I'm here in Reading, Vermont, and I'm on Jenny Road Farm, which is this farm you see right off here in the distance. This was the farm that was featured in one of the early scenes of Funny Farm when Andy and Elizabeth are on their way to Redbud. They are having a picnic on this site, so right here would have been a blanket. That's where Elizabeth was having a picnic, and Andy was actually down over this hillside right here. I could step forward over here a little bit. I don't know how well you can see it's how it's coming out, but this is a slope and it drops way down to the to the lower part of that that field. But Annie was taking a Polaroid of a cow, <laughs> and you can see the farm over his shoulder off in the distance. And when he snaps the picture, he comes running up this hill towards where I'm standing. You'd also see that house off in the distance. But he runs up this hill and he comes right up to here where Elizabeth is sitting on the blanket having a picnic and he's showing her the pictures. Oh my far. Mm -hmm. Now whether you have seen Funny Farm or not, chances are you have seen this farm off in the distance here in either another movie, TV show, commercial, or possibly even a calendar. The reason that I'm saying that is this farm is one of the most photographed farms in the United States. Photographers flock to this area because of its picturesque background. You have obviously the rolling hills, the green pastures, the mountain backdrop, all the foliage, just, just the natural beauty of this area brings photographers out here throughout different times of the year to photograph the farm in this area from right here where I'm standing at this view. Now a movie that featured this location is a movie that almost everybody has seen and it was taken from right here where I'm standing and that was in the movie Forrest Gump. Now they show Forrest when he was documenting his like run across the country. Forrest would come running down along this road under these trees and then the camera kind of pans and it opens up like this and you can see the farm off there in the distance just like that i'd think a lot about mama and bubba and lieutenant dane but most of all i thought about jenny i'm here in perkinsville vermont and this is downers covered bridge right here in front of me this covered bridge was shown a few times in the movie funny farm the first time is when andy and elizabeth are driving on their way to redbud so they'd have driven right along here in their little convertible across the bridge and they show them come out the other side. So they would have come right through 
the bridge and come out here onto this road. I'm here in Wethersfield, Vermont, and this is the location where the red bud sign was. It would have been stuck in the ground right here on a wooden post. And you see this location two times in the movie. The first when Annie and Elizabeth are on their way to Red Bud in their convertible. So they come along this country road here, they turn, right there's a Red Bud sign, and then they drive off in that direction. Now this is much more overgrown than it was during filming, uh, but this is certainly the spot. The second time you see this location is when the two guys cut down the red bud sign. The red bud sign would have been right here in the ground. They would have cut the post. The sign falls. Then you see the two heads kind of, the two guys' heads kind of get into the foreground of the camera and they run down the street in that direction with the red bud sign. Let's get out of here. This is the best one yet. Yeah, I bet we could trade this one for a railroad. Now that's when you see the moving van coming. It comes along here, down this road. Of course it misses its turn because it can't, they don't see the sign and they head off in that direction. And as the farmers first arrive, this is where they show them driving up where Andy out, lets out like a yoo-hoo. They come around this corner here and alongside of the driveway, right as my finger's going. There would have been a wooden fence here instead of the stone wall that you see. But they would have come right up here as the camera kind of followed them. And there were some low hanging branches that they kind of shot that through. So the camera would have stopped like here. The car would have been here and that's where the farmers would have gotten out. Now, when the farmers first arrive at their house, Elizabeth and Andy come running right out here. And they come running along the lawn and they kind of stop roughly here. And this is when the camera sort of pans around. It pans around Elizabeth and Andy and it just short, sort of shows uh, the beauty of this area. This, this is, uh, house is actually perched up on top of a hill. Right, it is pretty. The doctor's still here. I think they must live here, Andy. That means they're alive. Now when Andy and Elizabeth are coming up to the house for the first time, they come to this front door right here. And that's where Andy stops and picks Elizabeth up and tries to carry her in, into the house. Uh, this door was one of those, um, it's like a, a, a two-part door. I don't know the exact name of it, but had the, the latch so the top could open and the bottom could stay closed or vice versa. So when he opened the door, uh, the only the top had opened and then the bottom was, uh, was still closed. So that's when he kind of stepped forward and then dropped her into the house. <laughs> Uh, this is Andy's office that's up there. Uh, if I swing around here, you can probably see the window. There it is. And right there's the window that you see Andy looking out. That would have been Andy's window, his office window. Come here, look at this. Is that a finch? A lark? And then right here you can see is a tree. So on one of these limbs is where the bird birdhouse would have been. So when Andy opens up the window, he would have been chirping and looking at the bird. It would have been right from there. Right up there. Now right here is the location of where the farmer's mailbox stood. 
roughly where that tree is now growing. There was a mailbox that was put there just for filming and there were some stones, some rocks that were out there to basically show you how this is a split. So this is the farmer's driveway and this would have been the road that Crumb Petrie continued on after he threw the mail out. But this is where they show Crumb. The first time that Andy sees him, he comes screaming around this corner right here. And the look on his face, it goes from smiling to like uh, shock. Crumb would have come screaming around there with the old truck. Backfiring and smoking. And this is where he would have come over here and thrown the mail at the mailbox and continued along that. This was a, this used to be a road at one time and it was tree lined uh, on both sides. Uh, unfortunately, some of those trees were, were taken down. So it does look a little different, but this is where, this is where that occurred. And then the driveway here pretty much looks the same. Oh. Honey, are you all right? Jesus, what the hell was that? But this is also where you see Andy standing out here with a sign that says, please stop. And of course, Crum does the usual thing. Crum comes racing around the corner again here, blows right past Andy with his laugh off in that direction with the, the pickup truck. And that's when Andy's like, he's like fed up with it. He's, he's frustrated, he's yelling as Crum goes speeding off in that direction. You're not dealing with some ignorant hick here. I'm here in Redding, Vermont. And this is the location that they use the first time that you see the moving truck when the guys are kind of lost in search of Redbud here in rural Vermont. So the moving truck would have come right down this road in front of me here. And right off to the left, you can see that stone wall and that tree right here, that stone wall and that tree are very visible in that scene. So as the movers are coming down this hillside right here in the truck, that's when Crocker's asking Mickey for the map because they're, they're lost and they're trying to figure out where the hell they are. You can see this pasture that rock wall and that tree right here during filming of that scene. You see that map again? And this building in front of me would have been Max House from the movie Funny Farm. Now I can't get over how much this building still looks so much like it did during filming way back in the 1980s. Same could be said for this area here. Everything looks nearly identical, except for a few things that they did to alter this building to make it look like a house. Now in the movie, it had a porch on the front of it that would have been right here that was added. Right here is the door to this little barn kind of structure. They had it more set up to make it look like it was a front door to the house and there was a window that was here. They had a couple posts here with an awning and then Mac would have been sitting right out here on a chair. But everything looks the same. This wood pile off to the side, this little, I don't know what you call this little thing that's on the peak of the roof, but that's there. And they kind of more show it from this angle like this. They kind of cut this side of it out of the framing of the picture. So it's more like that that you see it. So you don't see this little um, part that's over here. I don't know exactly what that's for, but you can see there's some doors there. But I'm telling you, everything as far as even in the background looks nearly identical. You can still see these two trees. These, this one was much smaller, as was this one. The only thing that's really different is there was a tree roughly here that has been since removed. And I don't know if you can see over there, there's even cattle in the field. In the movie, during the scene that they filmed here, they were kind of like right over here in this, this part of the pasture, but they're right there. I mean, it's, it's, it's crazy how much this looks like it did during filming. But the porch that was added on here would have just been right off to the front of it. So the porch would have just been out here. It's sort of like a wooden porch. So this part of it right here is where Mac would have been sitting. How'd you know my name was Mac? And you can see, you know, the boards and everything that are in the background when he's talking. All, this is all, all visible. Uh, they decorated this up a little different just to change the facade, the way it looked over here. So it's not so much like a barn door and just made it look a little different um, as far as like trying to make it look more like a house during filming. 
And this window was either covered or wasn't there. There was sort of like a plant hanging, like a fern that would have been hanging from the porch. And it either blocked that or that window wasn't there. I'd have to go back and rewatch the scene. But this is where they show Max sitting here. And when the guys first pull up in the moving truck, Crocker and Mickey, they come down this road right here. And this is where you see the, the moving truck would have pulled right in here. And that's where Crocker pulls up and asks Mac for directions. Mac would have been sitting right here. So the moving truck pulls in right here. And that's when Crocker says, hey, Mac, which way to Red Bud? Hey, Mac, which way to Red Bud? <laughs> that's when Mac is like, how'd you know my name was Mac? How'd you know my name was Mac? And Crocker's like, I guess. Just guess. And then Mac says one of the funniest lines in the movie, in my opinion. But he's just like, well, why don't you guess your way to Red Bud? And why don't you guess your way to Red Bud? And the look on Crocker's face. You know, here he is, a city guy, moving truck. He's out here in, you know, beautiful rural Vermont trying to find directions to you know a place that he has no idea how to get to that was all shot right here Hey Mac, which way to Red Bud? How'd you know my name was Mac? Just guess And why don't you guess your way to Red Bud? Now when Crocker and Mickey are on their way back to Mac's house to ask for directions the second time they they kind of do a camera pan and it begins with this tree right here in front of me. Now it's still standing, but it looks a little different right here in this corner because right where the trunk of the tree, it kind of branched out over here. That portion has since kind of rotted out and this tree has a big hollowed part of it on the other side. So it looks a little different. But there would have been a red fence that's right along here, that would have been right along here and you can kind of see the fencing has since changed. but the truck would have come right down this hill. So you would have heard that funny music as the truck's coming down this hillside. And you can see those three trees, as well as those two trees, when the moving truck passes by, they're all still standing. You can see one, two, and three. And then over here, it's a little harder to see because they've kind of grown together, but there's one, one trunk there and another one right there. But those trees are nice and mature now. Uh, they have since grown up since filming. But right here is the road that you would have seen the truck, the moving truck coming back down to go down to Mac's house to ask for directions. And then Mac's house is right there. Now right here would have been an angle that they show Mac sitting in his rocking chair. It would have been right here and you would have seen the moving truck coming down that hill off in the distance so mac would have been sitting like right here and there would have been a porch post right here but he sort of like looks over his shoulder because he can hear a vehicle coming down the hillside and that's when you see the moving van coming back down here and it stops right out here in front of mac's house this is where they would have stopped and asked for directions pardon me sir could you give us some assistance please yeah Glad to help. So this is where you see a side of the moving truck where Mickey is just sort of hanging, his arms sort of hanging out the window. And that's when he asks Mac for uh, directions to Dog Creek Road near the town of Red Bud. We're looking for Dog Creek Road. And that would be near the town of Red Bud. And then of course, <laughs> you know, Mac said, if I'm going to Dog Creek Road, I sure as hell wouldn't start here. If I'm going to Dog Creek Road, I sure as hell wouldn't start from here. Supposing you had to. His comments are just hysterical. I mean, and that's what they show, you know, uh, Mickey and Crocker looking at one another and just the look on Crocker's face because, you know, he just wants to strangle Mac. Let me have a try. Let me have a try. Let me have a try. They shot all of that right out here at this location. We're looking for a Dog Creek Road. Uh, that would be near the town of Red Bud. If I was going to Dog Creek Road, I sure as hell wouldn't start from here. Or you can take the bridge at the fork in the road and save yourself a heap of time. But I wouldn't go that way if 
if I were you. The second time you see this bridge is when the movers are on their way to Redbud, trying to find their way to Redbud, I should say. <laughs> and they come down this road right here. So this is where the moving van, the moving truck was driving. They come around this corner from this road up here, around the corner, and this is where they pull up to the front of the bridge right here. Uh, Crocker's driving, that's when he stops the, the van and they're, he's sort of eyeballing the van or the bridge. And that's when Mickey's like chiming in. He said it looked like termites holding hands. So I, I got a kick out of that. See, he said, Mickey said he wouldn't cross this bridge on a skateboard. This ain't a bridge, it's termites holding hands. We're going over it. Not me, I wouldn't go over this thing on a skateboard. We're going over it. And Crocker's telling him to have some faith in the craftsmanship of his forefathers and Mickey's like, your forefathers, not my forefathers. Have a little faith in the craftsmanship of our forefathers. Your forefathers, not my forefathers. Oh, Lord. But uh, you definitely see, this is what they see as they start to inch their way out. You can see these uh, beams inside the bridge here. Um, so they do start to inch their way out here in the van. And then, of course, this thing starts, starts to crumble. but the van would have been sitting parked right here uh, when this, it, when this uh, bridge crumbled in the movie. This is also the location where Andy comes running down the driveway when he sees the movers coming. So he comes running down here, he comes up alongside of the moving truck and he's yelling at the guys. It was a bad time! Where the hell have you guys been? So they're slowly driving up this driveway. He's sort of like jogging beside them, yelling in the window. Oh man, did you hear that? Nobody near Oh, thing. somebody's asked for this! Perhaps you heard that. He's basically how what took them so long where the hell have they been <laughs> the guys are driving along here and you can see all this in the background as they go up towards the house you're a day late damn it we were sleep on the floor last night where the hell have you idiots been what that several scenes were shot right here at this angle it's also where you see the moving truck when it arrives it pulls up here now we're getting somewhere this good choice Follow me. Andy and the mover with the chair would have come walking right down along here. On the second floor is the last room on the left. It had a top quality leather, so watch it going up the staircase. Andy was telling him to bring the chair around this way. Instead, he carries the chair right along here and over to the pond where he promptly tosses it into the pond. But right over here is where that scene happened. So this is on the side of the house and this is where Elizabeth would have been out doing some gardening. So this has changed a lot since filming. Uh, there was just some flower beds, uh, some, sort of like rectangular flower beds that were out here. So she would have been working and right up there is Andy's office. So he would have been looking down at her, kind of dozing off as she, she was out there doing the manual labor and he was in there supposed to be writing his book. but she would have been working roughly out here and right up there is where Andy would have been uh, working in his office. Well, back to work. Now when Sheriff Ledbetter was exiting the house, he came out of that door and that's when Elizabeth and Andy were walking with him. Thanks for all your trouble, Sheriff. I'd say the worst is behind you now, but be careful where you dig in the future. Right over here, is the door that Sheriff Ledbetter would have been coming out with Andy and Elizabeth. And as I said, this little doorbell of sorts is actually still here. You can see that in that scene. Thanks for all your trouble, Sheriff. I 
I'd say the worst is behind you now, but be careful where you dig in the future. Our mailman tried to run us down with his truck, and then he threw our mail out into the road. You're on Crumb Petrie's route, aren't you? Problem is, your place is five miles off his regular route. By the time he gets all the way out to here, he's pretty well liquored up and pissed off. It's also when you see Sheriff Ledbetter when his taxi was here. The sheriff always ride around in a taxi? Yep, ever since he flunked his driving test. This is one of the angles that they show Andy when he was fishing. He would have been standing right there on the bank. Sorry, fellas. Andy walks over. He picks up a rock uh, to try to get the snake, hit the snake with it. He picks up a rock here under the tree, and that's when he looks up here towards the front door and he can see the snake slithering into the front door right there. Oh no. Hey. And then right here is that tree. Now when we first see Andy and Elizabeth arrive here in Redbud, they were coming down this road right here and they passed this telephone pole where there was a banner that said Founders Day Picnic on it. Founders Day Picnic, softball, sounds like fun. Wanna go? Don't think so. So they would have been driving in the little convertible car and they turn and go right off in this direction. You can see that drive is very visible. These trees were not here. A lot of these trees have grown up. This is more grass, but you can see a few buildings that are now obstructed by the, the trees. Those were visible, more visible in that shot, but they came driving right along here and came into Redbud. So this is where they have the little discussion. They're gonna go in and do some antiquing. That little thing is antiques. Let's take a look. But then Andy hears a crowd off in the distance. There was a baseball game. Why don't you head off to the ball game? I'll find you later. No, I don't mind. Well, okay. Now, there actually is not a baseball field here or the location that they use for that. I'll get to that. I'm going to show you that. Uh, it's in another location altogether. But this is the direction that Andy would run when he goes to take in the, the baseball game. So he runs towards this gazebo right over here. Now, there's actually a movie prop still standing in Town Shed, Vermont from the movie Funny Farm. And it's residing right here in this courtyard area, and it is the gazebo. Now, this gazebo was built for the movie Funny Farm, and the townshed community enjoyed it so much that they asked the production crew after filming to go ahead and leave it, and they did. And so it very much looks like it did during filming, except for one particular thing. See the staircase, how it's off, off here on the right side of what I'm filming? In the movie, it was actually on the opposite side. So that's the glaring difference in how it appeared in the movie and what it looks like now. So that staircase would have been right here against this side. So you would have entered the gazebo right like this. And as a matter of fact, if I step back here like this, there was a scene in the winter scene where there was, uh, uh, they were singing Christmas carols. They were set up in the staircase would have been right here. That the way that you would have gone up would have been right there now the way that i can tell that is when you see andy first run over towards this gazebo he's on his way over to see the baseball game he's running right along here he's running towards the gazebo in this direction and you can see this long rectangular piece of the gazebo the green here there would have been a bench right there and then over here is a smaller little green section you can see that visible, and then the staircase would have been right here. But they they built this for the movie. It's still standing, and it looks pretty good, all things considered, being that it's a prop that's just sitting here all these years. Now, there was an interesting thing that happened to this gazebo. It was actually hit by a car. 
uh, a drunk driver actually careened into it from this road right over here and damaged this side of it. Now, when Andy first arrives here to the baseball game, he actually stops at the concession stand. So they had a concession stand that was situated right here. It was set up here. And you could actually see this basketball court. As a matter of fact, you could see a basketball goal that was in the, in the picture. But the concession stand that Andy's at would have been right here. And they also show another scene. They also show another view looking towards the baseball field from the concession stand. So Andy would have been right about where I'm standing here. And this tree is visible in that shot. And this is the location that was used for the baseball game during the Founders Day picnic. Uh, this location actually is nowhere near uh, town shed, which is what served as Red Bud in the movie. It's quite a ways away. So that scene where Andy's running over to the gazebo towards the baseball game, uh, it didn't, didn't, uh, it wasn't anywhere near that that spot in real life. This is quite a ways north. Uh, but this is where the baseball field scenes took place. This is where Red Bud played its game. I can't remember the team that they were playing against, but uh, Andy was over there at the concession stand. He came running over here, and there was a, there was a section of seating that was right here. Uh, this would have been the dugout. You can still see how um, it is a dugout of sorts, but it's not uh, how it was depicted in the movie. And then over here is your, the backstop. The backstop during filming, this lower portion of it was had like a cover on it, so you couldn't see straight through like you can now. Same thing over here. You had the dugout and then the section of seats. This building was not here during filming. And as a matter of fact, everything that you see out beyond here, a lot of this tree growth was not really like that because you could see the, a rooftop of a building that was off in the distance right out here during some of those scenes that you cannot, uh, you cannot see now, it's all, it's all overgrown. And this is the building right here that I was referring to that you could see from beyond the backstop at the baseball field. See this interesting looking roof, how it has this little part that kind of projects outward on the top of it? That's visible from the ball diamond. So the baseball field would be over there beyond those trees. And all this has kind of grown up and it obstructs the view. But this is that building that I said you can see off in the background. But this is where Andy would have come over. He would have sat right over here. He would have been watching the game unfold. And it's, it was, there was so much comedy in this in this game. I mean, when the when the catcher gets hit with in the in, in the head with the bat, he's literally laying on like home plate. And I remember the woman, they show a woman in the crowd. She would have been standing over here in the seating section and she's yelling something like, pick up the ball, pick up the ball. Here's this guy that just got hit with a bat laying, you know, hit hit with the bat in the head laying there in the ground. You got like an outfielder that's like running in, kind of like, what do I do? What do I do? So hit the batter is rounding the bases was all this going on. I mean, it was it was hilarious. But this is a, this is everything that you see now. I saw on the internet that the location for this was in Heartland and they had it marked at a different spot than this and it just didn't seem right to me i looked at it over and over finally i realized it was over here so i'm going to contact the webmaster for that site but a couple things that i'll mention uh that you can't really see right now because it's obstructed by the trees there's a white building that's over here and it has sort of like a little like a small steeple top to it you can see that in one of the scenes uh, I'll go over and show you a different angle. You can't see it through these trees right now. You can also see uh, there's a playground that's out here off in the distance. So out over the outfield wall, um, you, you, you can see it out here. 
There's some playground equipment. That's all visible as well. Okay, I came over here to show you the back of this building that I was referring to that you couldn't see through the trees. See this little steeple? It probably has a, a, a name different than steeple, but I don't know what the proper name is, so I'm just gonna call it a steeple. See how the steeple's right there? And then there's this little, almost looks like a small little chimney that's like right here. You can see this back side of this building as well as this part of it here with all the windows, that bank of windows. You can see that off in the distance for some of those outfield shots. So this is the antique store of Red Bud. And as you can see, um, it looks very much like it did during filming. In fact, it still says antiques above the window, although in the movie it was bigger lettering and it was higher up. Any questions, feel free to ask. But this would have been the store that Elizabeth walked into. And unfortunately, it's closed and it's actually going through some sort of a renovation or a remodel. So you can clearly see uh, it does not look like it did during filming. However, uh, pay special note to this window here that I'm showing you, the shelving that's on it. If you remember, Elizabeth was literally looking through this window uh, and there was, I think there were like tea, teapots, uh, tea, you know, tea, uh, tea kettle, teacups. Uh, there were some items that she was looking that were right there. That belonged to my sister. She's dead. So you can, all, you can see that as she's uh, browsing throughout the shop. And another thing I'll show you that's very noticeable in that is over here off to the side, right through here. Now I can't point because I'm up against glass, but uh, look straight ahead. You, you sit, on the right, you see a staircase that goes up. To the left, you see a doorway. Elizabeth would have been sitting in a chair right right here in front of where I'm shooting and she would have been looking towards the same direction that I'm showing. So if you remember the older uh, woman that was uh, the owner of the shop went to go, um, she was gonna go make Elizabeth some iced tea and that's when Elizabeth looked, she was sitting in a chair right here in front of me, looked over her right shoulder and saw the stuffed squirrel and it made her scream. So you'll see that staircase and that doorway as the shop owner came towards her uh, just to tell her it was just a stuffed squirrel. But this is the interior of that antique store that was used in Funny Farm. So this is the lake that they would have been fishing in for Funny Farm. This is the lake that Andy goes out onto with the three other guys to fish. They were right out here in the middle of the lake. And when they, the way they're anchored and they're sitting out there fishing, you can clearly see that mountain off in the background. Oh boy. But this is one of the funnier scenes in the movie when Andy hooks Brock in the neck and tries to uh, get the hook out and he basically beats the living hell out of him trying to knock him out so they can remove the hook. But that was all filmed right out here in the middle of the lake. And then when they were all trying to get Andy, uh, Andy decides to jump ship, jumps in the water, and he swims up to shore. But that was all filmed right out here. So when Elizabeth first comes to the lake looking for Andy, she's standing right about here. And all these trees are visible in that shot, including this one in particular. It, it has since grown, but it has sort of a quirky bend to it. And this one with the way that the limbs branch out right about here and these, how they shoot off to the side, to the left. You can see a little bit of a gap there. That's all framed in that shot when she's standing here looking for Andy. And when Sheriff Ledbetter is coming here to the lake to find Elizabeth, this is where he drives the car right into the lake. If you remember, it was a driving school uh, car. He was driving, there was an instructor riding, passenger with him, but he, he's calling, Mrs. Farmer, Mrs. Farmer, and he keeps driving, and he goes straight into the water from right here. And if I turn around, this is the location that, that the car would have been coming. So he'd have come down the hill, been coming straight towards where I'm filming. Mrs. Farmer, Mrs. Farmer, I've been looking for you, Mrs. Farmer. 
So I went ahead and came out here into the water, right where Sheriff Ledbetter drives his car straight into the water to where I'm standing right now. So this is where the car would have stopped. Uh, notice I didn't say park because he just gets out and then he wades up on shore to give her the letter. But this tree is visible, uh, this one as well. But in particular, this one has sort of like a quirky twist to it. But this is where they shot that scene when uh, Sheriff Ledbetter drove his car right here into the water. Can I speak to you for a minute? Now, when Andy comes out of the lake after he was, after he jumped off the boat, he comes walking right up here. So when Elizabeth is talking to Sheriff Ledbetter, you can see Andy getting closer and closer as he comes up onto the shore. You want to give him the best burial money could buy. So this tree right here to the right is visible in that shot. And you can still see the root system that's how it projects outward here where the water comes around. This is where Andy comes out of the water. So he comes out right here and walks towards the direction I'm filming. So right out here is where the farmer's car would have been parked. Andy walks up to it, soaking wet, gets in the car, and that's when Elizabeth walks out, gets into it as well, and then they drive right up this little, there's like a little roadway right here, a little hillside, and they drive up there on their way back to Redbud. <laughs> Now I'm here in Redding, Vermont, and this is the location that is shown just very briefly when Elizabeth and Andy are riding in the convertible. They would have gone right along this road here. Elizabeth is driving and that's when Andy says stop and to go back. Hey, wait, stop, go back, go back. So she puts the car in reverse and they turn right into this drive here and they go to a house that's to my right that I'll show you in a second. Can't make a friend on goddamn buy one. But this is where he goes to get the first dog that they buy. And this barn right here comes into frame just very briefly. You can clearly see the side of it here. And when they turn to go over here, right about where my car is here, a sign kind of covers uh, the shot of the driveway. But this is where there's a house that they go get the dog. Now when the farmers get their first dog, they let it run loose out here and it runs down here towards the pond and it's chasing the ducks. So that's when it turns and it runs off in this direction. And as you can see, this, this it's a, almost like a field of sorts. They keep it very well maintained, but it extends down off the crest. So that's where they show the dog running along that tree line down there off into the distance. Sure likes to run. So this location right here in Redbud is where Ivy's Cafe once stood. Andy, that's your third order. <laughs> I am booked to leave. Call me Mr. Lamb Fries. Unfortunately, it's no longer standing. Uh, you can see how there's a building over here, a building over there. Ivy's Cafe would have sit been situated right here at one point. Now there's the man who knows when he's got something good in his mouth. You polish off that plate and you break the record. Stand back, everybody. The record falls tonight. Look, it didn't go. I believe you. He's right. I believe that record will fall tonight. And it's still going. I thought that record was going to last forever. Most folks just don't seem to have a taste for testicles no more. Testicles? Yes, ma'am. Sheep balls. 
I'm here in Heartland, Vermont, and I'm in one of the hidden filming locations for the movie Funny Farm. Now this location unfortunately has changed an awful lot, but I'm gonna walk through and show you where things stood, why it looks the way it does now, and fill in some of the missing pieces to why this location is so hard to find and why it looks so different now. This location here is where Sid's Hideaway Bungalows used to be located. Now, right now you're gonna obviously see there aren't any bungalows here any longer, but I'm gonna show you where actually two of them are still located and I'm gonna explain what happened to the other three. Now, when you first see Sid's Hideaway Bungalows, you can actually see this tree and a sign that kind of comes into frame. Now, the five cabins that were here for Sid's Hideaway Bungalows would have been right out here along this tree line. So there's actually a clearing that's right here. There would have been cabin number five, four, three, two, and one. And they sort of extended like an arch. It sort of like arched, curved its way around here and they were all kind of flush up against the back of these trees and there was a little drive that was here like a little graveled lane so when andy and elizabeth first arrived here they would have come the camera would have kind of panned like that and you would have seen the sign and they show them pull up to cabin number five Now cabin number five would have been the one on the end and it actually had a distinctive mark to it. It actually had a window that would have been right here on the side of it. Whereas you can see cabin number four and three off to the side of it did not have that. Now the cabins would have been pushed back farther. They would have been more up against this tree line here and there would have been almost like a little bit of a lane. So if you see an aerial view of the, air, the land that I'm standing on, the, there was sort of a drive that sort of arched its way around and you could see a few of these trees that were there. Now, of course, they go into the in, inside of the cabin and that's where the interiors were shot at another location. That was inside the uh, West Windsor Town Hall. That's where they filmed that. But the exterior was all here. Now later, they show Andy when he's leaving this location, he gets in his car and when he's leaving, you can actually see some of these other buildings that come into frame. You can actually see this house, but again, it was taken from more over at this angle. So I'll walk you over here. So the lane that the cabins would have been on was right here. So this is where Andy and Elizabeth would have driven and the cabins would have been there. So right here is when Andy's leaving, he drives down this pathway and it wraps around like that driveway and then he leaves right there. But in that scene, it's shot in the dark. It's, it's a night scene. You can clearly see this house right here. And I was really trying to identify where exactly they shot that. It was hard to tell because with these cabins missing, but when I was able to line up the night shot and see that building is clearly visible. So this is the drive that Andy and Elizabeth would have come in. They would have come right up here, right along here to their cabins. Now these cabins, were here for a number of years. So even when they were filming back in the 80s, these cabins had been sitting here unused from the 70s from what I gather, and they were in need of some repair. So they painted them and fixed them up for filming purposes for the exterior. The thing I found very interesting is, is over the years, the landowners took cabins number four, five, and three, and they moved them right here onto this slab. Now, the reason I know that is because one, I could clearly match it up with some old Google Street View images, and two, the current landowner told me that's exactly what they did with them. So cabins five, four, and three were pushed together and it made one big shed. So they poured this concrete slab here 
to make basically like a garage. Now, unfortunately, a tree had fallen and crushed them. So you can see right here, this stump, this is one of the trees that's also visible in that scene. This tree had fallen and had damaged these cabins a few years ago. So they had to take them down. But cabin number five, the one that was out there during filming, and the one that's here when they moved it into the garage was the one that was Andy and Elizabeth's cabin. Now the thing I find really interesting is cabins one and two are right here. These are two of the original five cabins from Funny Farm that have been used as an addition, almost like a breezeway from the house to the garage. But these are two of the original five cabins that were used in filming. Now these are cabins one and two. So they, they were the first ones that you, you, you don't really get to see a whole lot of them because you see more of like five, four, and three. But look at this, this totally matches up. If you, if you study you know, where the door is, the little peaked, the two windows, the roof, these are the, these are the original cabins. So they've converted, uh, this one is, I'm guessing sort of like a breezeway and this one is an additional, uh, they put a garage door on it so they've altered the front facade of it. But these are it. And then again, here's that lane. This is where the roadway is. This is where Andy and Elizabeth would have turned in to come in to Sid's hideaway bungalows. Fascinating. And again, these are some of the trees that you see. Those were there during filming. They're much, much bigger now. Uh, but this is where Sid's hideaway bungalows were, the hidden, one of the hidden locations. I'm here in Brownsville, Vermont, and I'm outside of the West Windsor Town Hall, which is this building right here. And this building was actually used in the movie Funny Farm but only the interior. It was a rented space that they constructed the interior of cabin number five, which was the cabin that Andy and Elizabeth would have gone to in the movie Funny Farm at Sid's Hideaway Bungalows. So the, the cabins for Sid's Hideaway Bungalows were exterior shots that they filmed right on location, but they did not film the interior of cabin number five that Andy and Elizabeth go to they actually did that in a rented space right inside this building, right here. So I'm inside the West Windsor Town Hall and I just spoke with the clerk of this hall and asked her if she knew where the filming location would have been inside here. And she said it would have been up here inside this portion of the town hall. She didn't know specifically where in here that they filmed it. Uh, this actually looks a lot like the town hall room that they used where Andy and Elizabeth met with the, the people of Redbud to uh, try to sell their house, but it is not, that's in a different location. Uh, but she said it would have been in this room. So somewhere in here, you know, on this floor in this open space area is where they constructed the interior of Sid's Hideaway Bungalows. So all the interior scenes for the Sid's Hideaway Bungalows were actually shot right inside this old, beautiful town hall. So right here is the location that they used when Andy was camouflaged and he was sitting here on the hillside with the boulder. But Andy would have been right here with the boulder. Now he was waiting for Crumb, Petrie, to come blazing past here uh, on his driveway on the mail route. So uh, these trees, you can still see them, how they're tree-lined. This drive is a tree-lined drive. They're much bigger than they were during filming. They were more like saplings uh, during the filming. But Crumb would have come zipping up here and this is where Andy was plotting to roll the boulder right down here and hit him. Now, if you remember, Michael Sinclair shows up. He beeped the horn. Andy thought it was crumb. He came running out here. And this is where they show Michael Sinclair. He comes up and he parks his car right there at that clearing. Oh, 
Now that's where Andy is running down there and asking him why was he beeping. What the hell do you think you're doing? Are you nuts? What were you looking at? And Michael Sinclair informs him that he works with his publisher and he's here. That's when they hear the horn. Now Crumb is on his way. My name is uh, Michael Sinclair. Wait, I'm sharp man. So that's when Andy has Michael help him roll the boulder up. He's just like the rolling the boulder up this grade. They get back up here to the position, and that's where Andy's asking Michael to hold the boulder, and he can't any longer. The boulder. So that's where you see it roll over his back. It goes down along here, just misses Crumb. And of course, that's where Michael's car is parked and it smashes into it. <laughs> but that happened right down there. I'm in a tiny little town called Pomfret, Vermont. And this town hall interior was where they shot the scene when Andy and Elizabeth are meeting with Redbud, the community of Redbud, to ask for their assistance in selling their home. Now, the opening part of that scene, they show an exterior of a building in Townshed, which is quite a ways south of here, and you're led to believe that this town hall scene was shot there. Redbud will seek official accreditation as the Acon capital of the world where in fact it was actually filmed here in Pomfret inside this building. Now I actually went into the town hall in Townshed and it actually looks a lot like this. However, there were a few things that didn't quite match up. And I'll show you some of the things that you can pinpoint that lets you know it was indeed filmed right here in Pomfret. Now, when the mayor and council were sitting up here on the stage, they were at a table just like this they were uh after they conducted their uh, agenda with the community members they went ahead and let the farmers speak to the town of redbud and the camera sort of started to pan backwards it started panning back like this and that's when you can see this woodwork come into the picture last in the agenda elizabeth and andy farmer have requested permission to address the council as the uh current lamb fry record holder i'm sure mr farmer is familiar to you all you see how there's like little insets of, of, of the wood. I don't know what the proper word is for that kind of architectural design, but I'll come up here and show you what I mean. There's almost like a little handle here, but it's like an inset, so it's not completely flush across. As they start to pan out, and you see the, the council sitting up on the stage, that becomes very visible. The next thing you'll start to notice is right over here on the left, you'll see these two doors. They become visible in that scene as well. So as they continue to back out, you see that woodwork and you see those two doors. Current lamb fry record holder. I'm sure Mr. Farmer is familiar to you all. Now there would have been chairs set on this side of the floor as well as here. And right here would have been open the middle part of it, which is where uh, Andy would get up. And of course, Elizabeth and the antique store uh, woman, they get up and walk there as well. But when they show this way, when you see this part, or this angle, I should say, you clearly see that there's a door here and there's two additional doors there. This door would take you right out to the front of this town hall, and that's how you would enter and exit it. But they had a wreath on the door here. They also had wreaths on the doors there. Thank you, Mayor Barkley, members of the council. Citizens of Redbud. Now, something you really notice when you look at that scene and you study it closely are these pictures on the wall right here. They're still the same pictures that were here back when this was filmed in the late 1980s. So you can clearly see this picture visible in the background as does this one. This one is very clear. You, you see that very visible in the background of that that shot and there's a couple more pictures as well but these two definitely stand out and you can even see the woodwork right here in the corners again has some of that inset for like what would have been part of the shutters here you can see that so when elizabeth gets up to start handing out the magazines you can you can clearly see all of that this is where andy would have been seated andy would have been seated roughly right here 
And that's when the mayor allows him to come up and speak. He, he kind of introduces him as Mr. Lamb Fry for the land, holding the Lamb Fry record. So the dubious honor that, that Andy holds for that. But Andy would have gotten up and he would have walked and he would have come right up here and stood roughly right here. And that's where he's turning and he's facing everybody from Redbud that was sitting here. But the, the one of the funny parts of that scene was when he was walking past right about here, uh, this is where the guy that he snagged in the boat with the fishing hook was like sitting in a chair right there. And as Andy went past him, he kind of grabbed a hold of him. It's like, why don't you sit down? And <laughs> they're telling him to let, it, let him go, knock it off. Barkley, members of the council. Uh, but Andy stands up here, talks to Red Bud, and asks, uh, explains to them that they're looking to sell their house. Uh, they're looking to uh, get assistance from the community in helping them sell that, their house. That's when uh, Elizabeth and the uh, antique store owner, the, the old woman, get up back here and uh, come forward with a bunch of magazines that they're passing out asking everyone for their assistance. So, you know, when they hear that that's what the farmers are asking, everybody sort of stands up. Uh, they don't want any part of it. And that's when Andy explains to them that there's money involved. And um, if, if they help them sell the house, that uh, the community of Redbud is going to receive money. And if people go out of their way, extra special uh, things to uh, help solicit the sale, that they'll go ahead and get an additional $50. We came here to ask your help in selling our house. There's money in this for you. This is where all that took place, right here in this little town hall of Palm Fret. So this is what they used. Another quick shot that they show of the front door of this house, the upper part right here, is when Andy and Elizabeth were inside with the walkie-talkie. That's when the guys were over here off to the side with the deer in the little uh, cage. When Andy says the infamous quote, cue the deer. Cue the deer. Roger. That's when they release the deer over here. Right here would have been the door that Crumb Petrie and Andy come out of. Ice fishing? I thought it was a nice touch. So that's when Crumb is walking out here and it, Crumb was telling him how it was going to cost them. But Crumb and Andy would have come out that door. <laughs> now when the farmers and Culbersons come to Red Bud for dinner, they would have pulled right up here. And this is where Bud and Betsy would have stepped out of the car and they're just taking in the sights and sounds of Red Bud. So you can clearly see this building in the background as the Culbersons step out. And that's also when the farmers are just sort of mesmerized because they're looking around and it's an extremely festive atmosphere. Everybody's out doing their part, trying to earn their share of, uh, of the money for when the farmers sell the house. This is gonna cost us a fortune. The $50 bonus was your idea. Thank you. Little piece of heaven, isn't it, bud? Now there was a sign right here for the antique store that is tucked away under there. And then there would have been a covered bridge, like a decorative covered bridge that would have gone over this driveway towards that done up for Christmas. Oh, Merry Christmas. <laughs> Andy? Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Now, this is also where Sheriff Ledbetter would have pulled up in his car. So he made the turn and he pulled up and stopped the car right here. Uh, notice I didn't say parked <laughs> because this is where he gets out and comes over to greet the farmers at Culberson's. Merry Christmas, folks! Merry Christmas! 
Mountains, and this is where his car starts to drift and roll off in that direction. Absolutely, twice a day. Check for any suspicious vehicles or persons in the area. If the owner's on vacation, I try the locks, pick up all the newspapers. Uh, that's where Andy sort of like shuffles the, the Culbersons across the street over there to Ivy's Cafe. Of course, Sheriff Ledbetter's car goes off in this direction, but there would have been a pine tree, a Christmas tree, all, all you know, decorated with lights, so it would have been roughly here. That's where Sheriff Ledbetter's car would have rolled into the tree and uh, smashed into it. Another time you see this house is at the in the winter towards the very end of the movie where the farmers come out and tell the uh, people of Redbud that they're actually not moving, they're staying. So they were the people of Redbud were all gathered right here and that's when they start pelting uh, the farmers with snowballs and he gets hit right in the face. But that happened right here. I have good news. We're not leaving. We've decided to stay. What about our money? Still get our money, don't we? Perhaps not. And this seating section over here is also where you see Elizabeth come over towards the end of the movie when she's pregnant to meet Andy. But one thing we had right: moving to the country was the best decision we ever made. Sorry to see the farmers go. <laughs> 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 <laughs>